This is Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined by Ben Davison. We are down here at Fight Camp ahead of, well, the main event now. Zhu Kan versus Lee Wood for the WBA regular featherweight title. How are you, sir? Nice to see you, Ben. I'm good, thanks, mate. You, you seem like you got that intro off to a T now. I'm excited, mate. I'm excited. I'm back. We, you know, boxing is back. Fight camp. Nice full press conference today. It's nice. No more Zoom. And then, yeah, we're back. We're moving. You're buzzing about the buffet on the weekend, didn't you? <laughs> There's a terrible start to an interview. Fat shame and shame on you, Ben Davison. After I told you earlier on that you looked nice and sleek today. I just told you you looked like you lost weight, but you did recognise that I was lying, so maybe it didn't go to plan. I have a good radar with things like that. And also, I definitely haven't lost any weight. But anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, so as I've just mentioned there, Zucan versus Lee Wood, your fighter has now been elevated in the wake of Connor Ben's positive COVID test. Does it change anything being the main event or is it just business as usual? Yeah, it doesn't really change anything other than what his nutrition will probably be for tomorrow leading up. Obviously, there's a few more hours to, to fill and to fuel up. Um, but other than that, nothing at all. Caught a lot of people, myself included, by surprise, this fight. Um, not something that we expected to see. We've seen Zhu Kan uh, linked with Josh Warrington in the past. Massive opportunity, though, for Lee Wood in, in what has to be said, a significant step up for him. Yeah, for sure. Um, you're 100% right there, but I do feel like stylistically it's a fight that bodes well for Leeward. I know you're not going to want to over-divulge your game plan, but just expand on that a little bit for me. Uh, just, you know, Kanzu obviously, his biggest attribute is, is his volume, and um, to maintain that volume you've got to stand in range for a longer period of time, and if the threat alone of Leeward's power uh, lowers his punch output, then we're taking away one of, well, his best asset um, without Leewood ha actually having to do anything. Second fight with Leewood, excuse me, uh, the first fight, very impressive. Um, going from that into such a sizable step up, I think one or two people may have forgiven you for maybe one in another one before a step up like this, but you've taken it with both hands. Yeah, opportunities like this don't come around often. Um, and at Leewood's age, it's a fight that he has to take. It's a life changing moment. How many? times there's an opportunity to come around like this um, so it's one that uh, we've had to take and thankfully Lee Wood's the type to look after himself always in the gym wasn't mild you know wasn't far out of far off of conditioning um, of where he needed to be when we when we got the phone call so yeah thankful um, and he's in good condition Everybody talks about uh, Zukan. I keep wondering whether or not to call him Kanzu or Zukan. I was yeah. Um, everybody talks about his volume punching and the fact that he likes to go in there, let his hands go. What other threats is he going to pose for Lee on Saturday night? Um, like you said, I don't want to go into too many details. Uh, obviously, got a great coach in Pedro Diaz who likes to work on angles in between the combinations. Uh, so sometimes he likes to try and shift in between his shots. And when he does let his hands go, he's not just he doesn't just let his hands go throwing any shot for any random reason. You actually let they actually flow, uh, put shots together well. Um, so like I say, it's, if, if Lee Wood la allows him to gain momentum like that, then it can become a problem. Obviously, we're a few days out from the fight, but where would this win, if, you, if Lee's able to pull this off, where would this rank in your like career? Every fight that I, I go to, I get asked that question. But this is, do you think this is a slightly different one considering some of the other fights you've been involved in? Um, I feel like they're all different. Like, and it's strange because I don't ever put them. I think I explained this before. Like, I feel like each fight is like their own individual pocket of their great moments with him, their great moments with him. Not all bundled into one. Um, the British title was a really good one for Leewood because it was a dream of his since a young lad, um, and obviously he had failed at an attempt very early on in his career, and we managed to help him prepare and, and, and be successful in in, uh, in his next challenge. Um, and obviously for this, it's, it's a world title, so yeah, I don't really put them all together, but obviously this would top the British title for, for in Lee Wood's pocket. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Pedro Diaz there, obviously a renowned coach, has worked with some of the greatest fighters in the world, particularly Cuban fighters. Uh, always keen to ask trainers about this. Do Again, do you kind of look at it as an, ability, uh, an opportunity to test your ability, test your coaching against another coach, kind of outwit the other one? I wouldn't say so, so much in this one, because I think, you know, we know what, it's not a case of, oh, I wonder how Kanzu is going to approach the fight. We know how Kanzu is going to approach the fight, and like I say, if he 
if all of a sudden his punch output is not what it is over the respective leeward power, then just the fear alone, I say fear, he's obviously not scared, but the thought alone, I mean, the presence alone of, of leeward has taken away Kanzu's best asset. So, but I don't think that'll be the case. I think they'll, he'll be looking to use angles and shift in between his combinations and just try and keep off the line. I mean, it's for, for Leeward to, to tame that. Leeward knows exactly what he needs to do. Um, answering your question now, I'd say more so if it was a case of two fighters that you're not quite sure how they're going to approach the fight. I think we know how both guys are going to approach the fight here. Been inactive. We, we mentioned briefly off camera, um, Zhu Kan, Kan Zhu, not, not boxed since 2019. You've worked with fighters coming off layoffs in the past. How does that affect a fighter's preparation when they're coming off such a big layoff? I think it can do if you're uh, the type to not really look after yourself, but um, Kan Zhu seems like the type to stay in the gym. Obviously, Josh hadn't boxed rounds before Ramirez since um, Pro Grey, October, was that 2019? Obviously, two minutes of boxing, blowing away is mandatory. Then went straight into an undisputed fight. That was a long period of time out of the ring. Um, but he seems like the type to look after himself, keep himself in good condition. So I don't think there'll be any ring rust. Everybody's been talking this week again, the murmurs of the ghost stories of Lee Wood's punching power. Uh, you've held the pads for, for many a big hitter in your time. Uh, just how hard does he punch? He's a very, very big puncher. Uh, but. There's been lots of big punches that never got anywhere and you need more than just punching power. Um, I'm sure kanzu has been in there with other big punches before. Um, so it's how he uses it and how he goes about the fight. Um, it's a great asset to have, but that alone isn't going to win him the fight. Just want to quickly jump forward and um, talk about a couple of other little bits and pieces while I've got you. Uh, this past weekend, you did some commentary. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't want to talk about the main event. Yeah, I did hear that you did a little bit of commentary. How did it go for you, Ben? Yeah, it was all right. It was different because obviously commentating is almost talking as though the people aren't watching it. Great right hand there, but obviously I'm not watching boxing going. So I'm talking about what I'm seeing, ring position and things like this and um, patterns and tendencies and these kind of things. But... The people at home are probably not watching it. I'm sure some people thought, oh, actually, I'm looking at it through a different lens here. I'm sure some people thought, shut up, don't want to listen to it. I'd rather just be told, that's a brilliant right hand there. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know how people took it. I think some people liked it, some people didn't like it. Um, but like I said, I can't change it. I'm looking at it through a, through a different lens to, to some other people, maybe. Do you enjoy it? Do it again? Um, would I do it again? I probably would, yeah. Um, if I was to do it again, I'd probably ask someone more experienced, like John Roy and I actually already spoke to him about it, to probably go over things, maybe sit back down, review it, go over what he thought I did well, what he thought I didn't do too well. Um, because it's different to, I'm not a commentator, you know, I, I did some commentating, but, you know, I'm not experienced at it, so I'd probably have asked someone like that to, to help me along the way before doing it again. The reason why I mentioned that, um, before we come on to talk about Joe Joyce, who obviously boxed then, I want to talk about Chris Bork. Uh, win oh, yeah. over um, Jimmy Beach. Looked good, impressive. Of course, you train a certain Shabazz Massoud. Uh, that's a fight that a lot of people, myself included, would like to see in the future. First and foremost, what did you make of Chris Bork's performance? Yeah, I thought, um, I think Chris is a really talented lad and he can, he can really punch. I don't know if he has a puncher's mentality yet, but I'm sure he will get it. I think there was a few times he showed his cards quite early, James Beach rushing in, trying to clip him on the way in, but all of a sudden James Beach was hesitant to then take that step in. And Chris needed to, to then sort of take the ball by the horns and start getting off first, um, which in moments he didn't. I remember Martin asking him to do so. Um, but I, do, I, I believe that Shabazz and Chris are the two most talented in that division. Any movement on that fight? Can we realistically expect to see that happen anytime soon? I mean, potentially, but I do think that's, pro like I said, I think they're the two best in that most talented in that weight division. I think if that fight's to happen, it needs to be like British title. Um, they've done some brilliant rounds in the gym together. They know each other. Um, they get on well, but obviously at some point they're going to meet because uh, they're in the same weight class. But I do think it would be a shame for that fight not to happen or to happen before. British title fight. Back to your uh, the main event, getting your commentary as well. This is an analyst hat back on. Uh, Joe Joyce's win over Carlos Stackham. Joe Joyce never in a bad fight, and uh, again this past weekend was in another great fight against Carlos Stackham. Yeah, stylistically, I do think it was a difficult fight um, because Stackham, 
as we said, having a height advantage can be a disadvantage. And Takam was getting underneath Joe's jab, which I don't know why he went away from the unpredictable type rhythm that he did have against Dubois. But um, it was quite very sane paced with that jab, and Takam was getting underneath it and bringing shots over the top of it. Um, Joe was standing at the same height, didn't really vary his height. Having said that, I do think there may have been an element of not lackadaisy, but obviously with the bar, he just looked a lot more switched on. Um, you know, everybody was saying this when he's boxing other people, oh, I can't get hit that often against the bar, I can't get hit that clean against the bar, and he didn't. Um, styles make fights, and I don't think. Uh, Joe would be getting hit that clean that often if he was to, to have another fight stepping up. And it's easy to now say, oh, yeah, Dubai, who would he be before then? But Dubai can fight, um, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't overly impressive, was it? I think he'd be the first to say that himself. But he's an animal, absolute animal, and a handful for anyone. You ready to go? Ready to challenge those top boys at heavyweight? He's got to be ready, isn't he? Realistically, taking his age into consideration, uh, who he's beat already on his resume, fantastic. Um, he's got to be ready. The win against Dubai, I think, straight away says he's ready. You know, if anybody else had beat Dubai in that fashion, people would have said, "Oh, it's a good win." Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say he's ready. And just moving away from uh, this weekend and last weekend, let's move on to next weekend. Lee McGregor, saw him here, looking in great shape ahead of his return to the ring. Lee, I mean, he's, he's always one who wants to get on with things at 100 mile an hour and a good fight for him to, to really showcase what he's all about next week. Yeah, for sure. Um, tall southpaw can pose his own problems. I think it may be, could potentially be tricky for a few rounds, but I think once Lee starts finding his distance and gets going and... Um, I wouldn't say the championship round, so I think it'll be before then. But I think once you know he physically starts being able to impose himself on the ground, that um, you'll start seeing a, a showcase from from Lee McGregor from from that point on. But I do think that it could be. Um, it might may take a few rounds for Lee to to start imposing himself, due to the fact that the grounds are tall, long, southpaw. He was sensational in his last fight against Karim Gurphy. Nobody's done that to Karim Gurphy over the years. We'd spoken a few weeks before then about, you know, you have this reputation as a not defensive coach, but something like that, as we've spoken about previously. Didn't see that from Lee McGregor. We saw a very different style change, um, tweak here and there. How much more has he got to give and how much are you looking forward to kind of working with somebody in a slightly different style than what we've seen previously? Yeah, I think that just comes from that comes from the Deontay Wilder first fight with Tyson. The reason it was quite a cautious approach was obviously down to the fact that Tyson just lost ten stone going into the fight. A bit of common sense. Um, however, Lee Wood won by knockout. Josh mandatory first round knockout. Lee McGregor first round knockout. Shabazz Masood's last fight knockout. So I don't really know. People just, they don't actually look and then come up with their own assumption. They hear one thing and regurgitate it. Um, Do you accept that Lee's style is slightly different to, to what you've worked with or, or the, the changes that you've implemented in his last fight slightly different than what we've seen with some of the other fighters you've worked with? Yeah, I think there's adjustments that have been made through all of them, but uh, it was actually Lee Wiley that said, we was going back over some Lee, Lee McGregor footage and... Um, suggested an adjustment in Lee McGregor's style and 100% is right um, and he's comfortable with that now that showed in the in the Karim Gurphy fight and that's why the layoffs going into that fight really benefited us because there was like you say a big adjustment to his style um, but of course adjustments being made along the way all the time but um, yeah I'd agree with that big probably the most change has probably been would you agree with that most change in anyone's style being with Lee McGregor and finally, last but not least, Josh Taylor. I went up to Edinburgh the other week. Um, I had a couple of lemonades with him over lunch. Lemonades. A couple of lemonades. Um, <laughs> how, is, how is the champ getting on? Yeah, he's all good. Um, he was hoping to come down the weekend to support Lee, but um, I don't know if there's direct flights or whatever. So, um, And he's got a meeting greet the, next, the day after or something. Um, so he'd like to come down. I think he's working on it. Um, but yeah, should have some news soon on when we shall expect to see 
Champ, 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 back. Jack Cattrall, November, when I spoke to Josh, he said that it's probably that, um, but he said that he wouldn't be averse to, obviously, if a big fight were to come up and take something like that, but it looks as though we're settling on the Jack Cattrall fight, the mandatory in November. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I mean, it's not my place to break any news or anything like that. I'm not breaking any news, but obviously Josh has a hand injury, um, and it's... The, uh, the next move is going to depend on how long and what the situation is there. He's having rehab on it. If he needs surgery, I'm not saying this is the option, so don't. But potentially it may be a case of letting Josh fight, uh, letting Jack fight, and then maybe having to fight after back for that if he's going to be a long now. Because obviously Jack's been out for a while with um, obviously letting Ramirez and Josh fight for the belt. So it just depends on a hand injury. and. Certainly, my recommendation will not be to go into a fight with um, not being 100% because that's how problems come around because you're not uh, respecting the opponent, not going into the fight 100% at that level. It's not something you can afford to do. When I was with him, he went to the doctors to have some like electric stuff done on his hand. Can you explain what that stuff is? What? Because I, I think he tried to explain, it, but I don't think Josh really I understood it. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like potentially shockwave therapy. Yeah, I'm not sure. Was, um, but yeah, I'm not a doctor, Rob. Well, I thought that you know, being his trainer and, and having a, a keen eye for that sort of stuff, maybe you could tell me what was happening to him. No, nah, I don't really know. Um, not a jack of all trades, am I? You're a commentator now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Done me there. Um, yeah, I don't really know, but uh, he mentioned it to me. It sounds like shockwave therapy, but um, I'm not too sure. Finally, Joshua Usyk, September. It's been announced. Talk to me about the fight. Break it down, Ben. Yeah, I just think that if Joshua looks to to have a chess match with Usyk, um, trying out thinking, he, he could be asking for some problems. I think if he physically imposes himself, sets a high pace, um, and doesn't allow that space, time, and, and for, for Usyk to think um, and to dictate, then it, I think he'll stop Usyk. But if he does allow Usyk time and space um, to dictate, then it could it could cause some problems for Joshua. Usyk is the best opponent Joshua's faced as a pro. In some areas, yeah, I'd probably say that. In terms of intelligence and IQ, I probably would say, yeah. Um, but there's the element of he's, pro he's not really a heavyweight um, compared to these monsters uh, in the division. So, like I say, I think he can either he's either going to make him make it a harder night for himself, or not a, an easy night. But I think. It'll be an a, lot, a lot easier night if he physically imposes himself on Usyk right from the get-go. Okay, well... Recklessly, obviously, but there we go. Okay, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Last thing, because you stood over there, so you have to say it quietly. How does the fight go on Saturday night? Give us your prediction. Look into your crystal ball. Lee Wood versus Zukan Kanzu. What's going to happen? No comment. I can't say, because if I say, oh, I think the fight's going to go like this, then his team's going to watch it and be like, oh, that's I don't right. think Pedro Diaz speaks that great English, to be fair. You never know. I'd rather keep that card in that back pocket, son. <laughs> that's very much. Better safe than sorry. <laughs>